Okay, so we're back. This time we're gonna be going over an epsilon delta limit example. And anytime you see these videos and you see something in blue, I tend to do all my examples in blue and then I try to actually solve the problem in red, okay? The black is usually just the black and white stuff about math. It's kind of the, the general stuff where the examples are in blue, okay? So that's why you see these different colors here. So if you recall from the last, the last video, we have our limit notation right here. The limit of f of x is equal to, the limit of f of x as x goes to c is equal to l. And then we have our formal definition, our epsilon delta definition of a limit right here. If you, if you don't remember this, then you probably want to uh, look back at the video before this one to get a full understanding of the formal definition. Okay, so an example problem look, might look something like this. It says prove that the limit of two of x plus five as x gets closer to two is equal to nine. Okay, so we're gonna do this problem. We're gonna solve this problem. We're gonna prove it using our definition right here. Okay, so the first step that we're gonna do is write down, write it down in terms of our definition. So we have x minus c, this, this inequality right here. I'm just gonna write that down in accordance to our example right here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna write with a zero is less than x minus c, well we don't just have c anymore, we have a two, so I'm gonna put a two in there, is greater than delta, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing with our other inequality right over here where it's f of x minus its limit uh, is less than epsilon. Instead of writing f of x though, I'm gonna do this two x plus five, and I'm gonna do this in parentheses just to make my life a little easier, okay? So if f of x, and put it that right here, Minus L, well our L is right over here, nine. You notice it matches up with our L over here. So I'm gonna do minus nine is less than epsilon. Okay, so so far all I did was put our example into the terms of the definition, okay? <clears throat> Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is find the connection between delta and epsilon. We need to make sure that this holds true with delta and epsilon, okay? So we're gonna to try to find a connection between these. The first thing I want to do is simplify this, okay? So I have two x plus five, quantity minus nine. So what I'm gonna do is five minus nine, you should end up with two x minus four. Okay? Now again, I want to find the connection between delta and epsilon, and you might see it already. If not, you might have to just keep doing some algebra. You, you will see it eventually. I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is gonna divide out this two right here. And if you remember your absolute value uh, properties, you can just take the two out and you end up with x minus two is less than epsilon, okay? Now hopefully you can kind of see the connection. There's an x minus two right here with the epsilon and an x minus two with the delta, okay? So what I'm gonna do is solve for this x minus two. So I'm gonna divide both sides by two. Two's cancel, okay? And then you end up with an x minus two absolute value is less than epsilon over two. Now we're trying to see the connection between delta and epsilon. Well here we have this value is less than epsilon over two and this value is less than delta. So what you can say is that epsilon over two is equal to delta. And that shows our connection between epsilon and delta. Now if we look back at our definition, it says if epsilon is greater than zero, then Delta is greater than zero, okay? Well, if you put any value in that's greater than zero for epsilon and you're dividing it by two, you're always, 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 always going to get a positive delta every single time. Doesn't matter what value you pick for epsilon, if it's greater than zero, you will get a positive delta, which it says right here. If epsilon is greater than zero, then delta is greater than zero. That's correct, such that, okay, then we have our two inequalities. Well, we started with those, so we kind of worked this definition backwards to prove it. But basically, this work right here will be enough to prove that this limit exists. Now, as a challenge to you, I want you to come up with a different function, a different limit that doesn't work. And you actually see how this will not show the connection between epsilon and delta in accordance to our definition. So that's your challenge. If you have any questions about this or any other problems, please let me know.